Hi everyone, this is Natalie. Welcome back to my channel. Today, thanks to Ned Galley and the different publishers, I was lucky enough to get some uh, arcs. Slightly advanced, just because when I requested it, I was extremely close to uh, the publishing date. Nevertheless, I got some arcs. I read it and I'm ready to talk to you about them. So let's get started. First book, Castle Skull by John Dixon Carr. This is a re-edition, re-edition, another, a new edition. The story was published in uh, 1927 in uh, Castle Skull. This is part of a series following a French sleuth, Ben Collin. Ben Collin? I don't remember his first name, but and calling the story sets between the First World War and the Second in Europe. So our French sleuth has been requested to investigate the death of an American actor in his uh, German ca castle on the Rhine. Who could have murdered our American actor between his sister and few other guests staying at the same time. So you have some possible suspects, obvious ones, maybe not so obvious for those, but obviously, like always, it's a matter of why. I can say that I like the writing of uh, that author. It's uh, something that you can really fast read. You are inside the story, like you are getting inside. You can picture the different places where you are. Sometimes it can be too much uh, with the description. Well, for me, anyway, I uh, am not really a fan of having too much description, so I can lose myself easily. I would say the maybe the main negative point that I can come up with is that we are following and hearing more from the the official German investigator and the French sleuth is more in the background. He's always around the German official one listening and sometimes he's giving one clue or another but he isn't the main and the only one in the investigation. At the end when we have the result of everything. It's gonna be the the French Ben Colin who's gonna do it, but I I I felt that it was a bit of disappointment because it's that character Ben Colin that we were supposed to follow, but we do not really throughout the in investigation in that way. It was a bit hard for me to connect with that character. It was interesting from the murder mystery point of view but not that much as with the character to connect with him and to keep following that series because or for that character obviously it's a murder mystery so we are not gonna get a huge amount of character developments nevertheless i thought that it was it wasn't enough, or it was barely anything, or it was actually nothing. I would have appreciated slightly more character development just to have a better, uh, just to um, guess a bit better with the investigation of oh, that one could have done it because of this or because of that. For having a better idea of who they are, but where you can place them as being a potential suspect. Otherwise, it's like you have a murder and everyone who was around at the time of the murder is automatically considered as a suspect just because they were there. It was slightly too fast. I think the, the investigation lasts maybe, I don't know, two days? maybe I, I, it was really too fast and you felt it it's just that a few more days it still would have been fast but you would have more 
to appreciate with the whole thing story. I give it at the end three stars. The second book read was Smart Woman's Guide, The Smart Woman's Guide to Murder by Victoria Dodd. I think that's how you uh, say her name. It was published May 6th, so very, very close. Over the end, but I mean, still close enough. The story. It's, uh, I have to say that it's uh, an adult murder mystery happening nowadays. We are following Ursula, which is, uh, who is the daughter of uh, Pandora Smart. Smart's guide. It's smart because of the last name. You've got it. Ursula is telling out the story. She is the daughter of Pandora and uh, she wasn't supposed to be with her mother and the members of her book club for this weekend retreat in a very isolated old manor, old mansion, old house in the countryside. Do you see already all the aspects that you need for having a murder mystery? But I can say that very fast and quickly death came joining everyone at this party and uh, start to give us um, start to give us the body that's not going to be the only one inside and obviously you f you have everyone as a possible suspect really definitely and at the same time everyone uh, as a suspect as <laughs> being the killer but but everyone as being the next victim the fact that this is Ursula, the daughter, who is uh, telling us the story, yeah, beside the fact that you guess that she's not gonna die because she's telling the story. I really do enjoy the fact that Ursula is telling us the story because of her temper. And it makes a really funny reading. The way, it's not the way that the kind of relationship that she has with her mother is more like her hate love relationship the feelings that she can have towards different members of that book club those different women they are six i think in total whether they are friends of her mother or a member of the family it is very special and even in between all the different members i can tell you that love is not necessarily the primary concern between all of them and it's not even love it's just liking it's just enduring each other most of the time so that's why it's easy for us to see who could be the next victim it, it's gonna happen a few times that you will wish one or two specific character to be killed I have to say right away, you wish they will be killed and they will be the next ones. I really did enjoy, or I really still do enjoy the writing of uh, the author. It is a very uh, light and fast reading one. Uh, it's really easy to right away get into uh, the story. I mean, being um, fascinating, but more gripping with, with what's going to happen. And it's probably because of um of Ursula and her 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 temper her funny but love to hate uh way of experiencing the thing and of giving us um of telling us the story it's probably mainly no probably definitely <laughs> the way of really being hooked at each pages but beside the fact that when you have the first murder you obviously want to know and a great thing that uh, Victoria Dodd did with uh, that story with that book is the ambience it is very ominous and suspenseful obviously because it's mainly the time it's like I said a nice lady countryside uh, old matter house but we have always the weather 
with a storm where this is this time with snow and uh, no one can get out and by chance that there is no uh, phone there is no internet there is no Wi-Fi there's nothing nothing to kids keep the guests connected with the outside world you have the strange um, host of that old matter which brings as well that a bit scary yeah more like I said a menace um, ambience for that whole story so that's another way of being completely hooked because you can feel the fear of which one will be next why are they targeted what is the link between all of them so pretty much the whole way I really did enjoy except for the ending during the whole time we have a character I'm just gonna say her name Bridget and nothing more than that she is a bit weird with her behavior but that's the way that uh, the author created her and created her as taking her place within the story but because of that and because of the ending it gives me anyway a lot of stuff or it took a lot of stuff away for uh, for me and I can say there's gonna be spoilers tiny but spoilers here so if you don't want to hear just shut it down and I'm going to tell you when you can come back because two things the first how come the vape pen has not been destroyed after all this year second will be why was it taken during that weekend getaway put inside her handbag for everyone to see it this is just everything I'm gonna say but those are the two big things that really doesn't add up that in a, a real a realistic point of view it's never gonna happen and that is something that really was a disappointment for me with the whole story because everything else was so good like I said the the, the ambience the feeling that it's really ominous and that you are gonna be well if you feel that you are one of the characters that you're gonna be the next one and it was really good for that the ending took pretty much everything away and that's a bit sad so it was a three stars because everything the execution was so good uh, but not the ending next book and this one is gonna be published May 12 so it's it's pretty much in the background uh, right now it's gonna be terraformer uh, first installments by Colin Hook she wrote the reawakened series I read reawakened I loved it I gave it five stars I didn't continue the series of reawakened I started the second but I couldn't go for it and I stopped with no intention to keep following it so having that in mind I went for another one from her terraformer young adult once again but this one it's a fantasy sci-fi because we are way further into the future following Astra Meteor she is a 17 years old she left earth behind among many other scientists within the venture the vessels the first colony vessel that will reach is about to reach uh, a new planet Krillian 4 in this future you don't have any more um, DNA anomalies it's pretty much pure human beings in the way that there is no uh, illness that can be uh, existing within the DNA if a, a child comes to life and he has a disease he is gonna be terminated yeah that's very sad so Astra 
she is supposed to have been terminated. She, uh, her lungs didn't develop to her full uh, or their full potential, but because her parents are hugely um, talented scientists, it's part of the way that the way that she has been conceived. She or they found a way to allow her to breathe through something. I'm not gonna say. Sorry, but uh, she's gonna hide obviously her condition. The other thing that I can tell you is that this new planet has a mind of herself, which will give some very frightening moments to the colonist with is it really not uh is there really a species existing already on the planet or what is really going on astra is a scientist as well she's a botanist she had to hide herself while she was on earth so she didn't have much of contact with others or uh, specifically other kids and since she is a teenager, we have that aspect of obviously, maybe potentially falling in love or having feelings for uh, one or maybe two men. It doesn't really matter the amount. But the questioning of for her, is it feelings or is it something can explain by the science as is it something in the air that you breathe and that makes you have those feelings so she's questioning a lot and I totally understood in the way of it's new for her she never experienced that before and she is so much thinking as a scientist so everything has to have an answer an explanation but sometimes it's way too much it gives a feeling of a teenage woman's not at the right place and at the right moment so it takes a bit something away i think that few avenues within the story could have been more developed or just developed by itself because it's pretty much the whole time following um, the three characters um astra and the two other men thane and uh jackson we don't really have a lot or barely anything from the different colonists as the way that the colony is building itself the reaction facing this new planet and this this new environment that they don't understand and it seems to reject them it's it's like if we are just here and we could have been way deeper and, and way better um, in that way it really gives a feeling of a teenage a really young adult book maybe it's because it would be more appreciated for a younger uh, reader audience than I am it's taking a bit away from the whole uh, idea behind that story because uh, it is really an environmental tale it's not um, gonna make you cringe or uh, climb the trees and scream i think that it could have been handled a bit better the idea that she has behind her story and the creation of a story for the environmental is really good but because she is too heavy on the young adult romance first very first layer of that it feels that she is missing a train that could have been taken to go a bit deeper within that ever environmental tale without being too serious and too heavy. It's uh, basically what I can say and that's why I felt that it was a three stars. Did I mention it was a three stars? It is a three stars. Uh, with the ending, you definitely feel that more is gonna come. So I don't know if it's gonna be a duology or the or a uh, trilogy. And the last book that I am talking about has already been uh, published, so I am a bit late. But 
The Excess of Darkness by Tom Clear Lake. It is an adult paranormal horror, horror, <laughs> horror, conspiracy, suspenseful story. I can't say that I have mixed feelings because in that way it's not really mixed. It's clearly a lot of disappointment. I give it two stars. The story starts with the kidnapping of five different five different kids and the FBI obviously investigating. They are sending a speci special agent on uh, the ground, Elliot Cooper, to try to find the kids and obviously to bring them back. So, so far, I would say it gives the vibes of some serial killer possible, but something like that. Then it start to go into the paranormal direction with some unknown, mysterious stones, placement stones, like in possible witches. So you feel like, okay, well, personally, I like more that direction. Okay, so we are going more deep with that. Uh, which is dark ritual uh, with those uh, me me megalithic stones. <laughs> I'm gonna get it right. Then you enter or you slip the horror things. But I'm not gonna say because I'm not gonna take that away. But you slip in the horror, so you're like, okay, I, I. I'm interesting. I, I want to know what's going to happen. Where are we going with that? So, so far, the kids are not even in, um, they are not even here. We're not even talking about them. And then we are switching again and we are going into some <sighs> conspiracy, worldwide uh, conspiracy with an extremely, or oh, probably, uh, well, uh, according to uh, the story to the book, uh, but fiction, the oldest species existing on the planet like a billion years ago um, that you can characterize as the bad one in the story. So yes, you have that world-wide dark conspiracy for taking everything down and you start like, whoa, where we are going? What is it really happening? It is way too much. And this is definitely how you feel. There is way too many things, too many genre, too many categories put inside. It's a melting pot of different things. And it took really too much away for, well, at least for me. But the conspiracy thing, it's not because it's conspiracy that it's insane. It's just because it is way too many things adding up to what the author wants to give with the story. So much stuff happened that it's even, it doesn't add up with the reality. Out of the blue, North Korea decide to nuke um, the biggest cities in America. You kind of have way later an explanation, but it's still really not really convincing. But to my knowledge, when you are uh, using nuclear weapons, the cities are obviously destroyed, but you have some radioactivity left behind. I mean, right? So it is a bit hard for me to believe that because all of that things happen in a matter of few days, okay? So it is a bit hard for me to believe that um, that first everyone has been uh, evacuated from those big cities in a matter of maybe 24 hours or less. So those who survived, they are coming back in the city right away in order to, well, keep living and find something to eat or whatever. So the reactive thing is, is radioactive thing is, I don't know, Maybe I'm wrong. It is possible. I don't know everything. With the the beginning of the conspiracy and they had um, 
they had a hacker attack and pretty much all the satellite had been put down but at the same time the internet is still working at the same time cell phones are still working I don't understand because mainly it works with satellites not everything is on cable so I'm not really sure I would have prefer the author to stick with the paranormal megalit megalit <laughs> megalithic stones um, maybe some ancient prophecies but with all of what happened with the conspiracy it is just insanely non-believable. The other thing, and this is a personal thing, not necessarily personal preferences, that I freaking hate the trope of the couple having a child and the child is not considered that he will be the saver. I, it's personal, but I freaking hate that. Those bad ones is all a species. Because I try not to say too much they gonna use some humans. I just wonder, are they good at math or did they lost something? Because in the meantime that they are killing people with viruses and with the different civil wars and ills, well, the lucky survivors, I mean, it's not gonna be much and you're using a certain amount of percentage per year so it's gonna be zero at some point plus well what I, I forgot but I really want to mention it's not the fact that <clears throat> within the conspiracy and with it with that uh, bad one species uh, it is a reminder of uh, the Nazi camp the death camps but it is following that very closely that idea too many ideas but going in too many directions but it's brought in one story it, it's just it's like all the different ideas that the author could have had he put in one story just for making a big show for us reader it's a big nonsense and it's sad because there is so much potential behind the story and um, the beginning but I would say pick maybe one or two ideas and stick with those and develop them and it's not the fact that it's going crazy crazy is good when you make it right but it is not here so yeah this is uh, not something that I enjoy at all it happens well, this is uh, uh, all of the four different books that I read so far, uh, thanks to uh, Ned Gully for Ned Gully <laughs> for Ned Kelly with the uh, advanced arc copies that uh, that I was able to read. I'm gonna keep reading just because I was so and I'm still so close from some publishing dates um, that I am uh, still. Uh, sticking with uh, the uh, arcs of uh, Ned Kelly for uh, a little bit so probably uh, one of the other quick next videos will be uh, again uh, Ned Kelly but I really do enjoy the and appreciate the idea of if lucky enough at being accepted by the different publishers uh, inside Ned Kelly and uh, of being able to read something of um, having the information of some books and get a chance at discovering something that I probably will never have heard anywhere else from anyone else and discovering something, a new author, um, new books, a new love and uh, yeah, that's, that idea really um, connect with what I want with the channel. It, thank you very much for the patience of listening to me and uh, I hope that one of those books or maybe all of them interest you at uh, giving a try tell me if you read them or, or if you read something else from those authors down in the comment sections don't forget to subscribe to like the video well you can do it just uh, once 
it's gonna help my channel to keep more visibility and to keep growing and in the meantime enjoy the quietness of your home and the sun the spring is here